Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today we're going to be addressing all the issues with Outerversal Goku. Now, nothing important here, Jabbers and Goons and a couple other people have done this themselves here, so I'm not going to be using their arguments. However, I will be referencing one thing from nothing important here, and that has to be with the problem with Outerversal Goku in versus the base here. Now, many people try to pass this off for mainline Goku rather than a composite Goku. You see, that's really one of the biggest issues I do have with it as a whole here, because again, you're using everything composite for Dragon Ball and trying to apply it to the mainline canosity of Dragon Ball, which again hurts all your arguments because you have have the writer himself literally confirming that hey um yeah that's not that yeah that's not um that's not applicable here. <laughs> You can't use these because I never put them in the anime. Yes, that he worked on them, but that doesn't make them canon to what he has already established. They're side projects. Now, let's talk about the term autoversal. In order to be autoversal, you have to completely transcend the likes of space, time, and dimensionality. This means that you cannot be bounded by this dimensionality or by the literal definitions of space and time. Goku is nowhere near completely beyond space and time here. And the reason why is because, again, as everyone likes to point out, the Dragon Ball macrocosm actually gets to 5D with different space-time continuums, especially in the Kaioshin realm, I believe, as well. And then there's Heaven... Hell, and Snake Way, which are all infinite in size. Keep in mind, macrocosmic scaling already starts at 4th dimensional, which again is around the universal margin, which again is kind of already established. I think this was already established in the Buu Saga, where Super Saiyan 3 Goku should be, you know, universal at the bare minimum. And then you also have, um, whatchamacallit, Battle of Gods here, where Goku and Beerus create shockwaves, shaking the entirety of the Dragon Ball cosmology and stuff like that. And then again, they are already going to destroy it, which would again put them around 5D. Now, with other things like heaven being, well, higher than, you know, transcending dimensions and can't be perceived by the human world, again, a lot of y'all like to take this quote and try to say it transcends dimensionality. No. Dimensionality and dimensions are vastly different, with dimensions referring to the actual three-dimensional measurements and dimensionality refers to, to, to the perception of the dimensions, which again, humans can only perceive things in a third-dimensional level. And this would also apply to the humans in Dragon Ball because again, they're regular, average, everyday people. Unless, unless they're Tien, Yamcha, maybe, I mean, you already know he's trash, and Krillin, obviously, right? Those beings should probably be able to perceive the afterlife, and then you also have the sheer fact that Kid Buu was able to travel to the afterlife. Now, again, we're not sure if Goku can do this, as, again, Kid Buu does have some conceptual components to him as well, or some conceptualism to him, but, again, it's very possible he could, meaning that it's very possible Goku could perceive things beyond what humans can. But again, we don't know the actual, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess you could say level that Goku or the other Sans can perceive things. But with that out of the way, let's also attack a, another scan, which is the Otherworld scan. Now, a lot of people like to use this and use the highlighted parts of this, but ignore the rest of the scan, saying that Dragon Ball is fully and 100% a part of the Asian cosmology, or at least very pretty much 100% similar to it, when it says that Dragon Ball only has a few similarities to it. Keep in mind the Asian cosmology, um, or sorry, Asian mythology, excuse me, would revolve around characters like Sun Wukong, and then Asura and the Seven Deities, who also pretty much apply things like Samasara. Samasara is the wheel of life, the end, rebirth, and then the repetition of of everything. It's basically life, death, and the other cycles that continue within it. It's basically Buddhism itself here. Now again, there are only a few similarities to the Asian mythology that doesn't put it completely within the Asian mythology. Otherwise, you would have to make the um, argument that Goku is actually Sun Wukong himself, right? 
right? Let's also go through another scan, super dimensional. Now, again, for some reason, people like to equate super dimensional to the universal layers, but this is because of Comic Vine, because of things like Jigen and Cho and stuff like that. And it's just, it, it's not believable because, again, that is not what was stated in the movie. The movie, or known as Dragon Ball Super Broly, said they punched each other out of the boundaries of their universe which again is around the fourth dimensional level, meaning they were pulling off another five dimensional feat. Let's use an actual example of a super dimensional being that has a higher level of cosmology. Now, Hytherian from Transformers is a super dimensional being that is a threat to all universal streams. Now, what are the universal streams brand cosmology in Transformers? Very simple, right? The Universal Streams brand cosmology is 17D to 22D brand spatial dimensions, all right? Meaning that someone like Hytherian is able to eat hyperversal cosmologies very casually. And again, let's circle this right back around to Goku. Even if this was a, and again, I'm calling this by a, a super dimensional feat, he does not have the brand cosmology because, again, he's punching himself out of his own macrocosm in order to do this, which would, again, mean he would be up around the five or maybe even the six dimensional cosmology. And keep in mind, I'm going off the sheer fact that in the manga, which, again, is way ahead of the anime and came out first, the sheer fact that he already would have surpassed Gogeta at that level. So, again... Yeah, there are better super dimensional examples, and again, this would mean that the context was blatantly ignored by these Dragon Ball stands here. But let's move on to another argument. Now, I'm not sure why I should have to say this because, again, this is just common sense here, but um, the Dragon Ball Z movies are non canon, the Dragon Ball Super ones are. Or maybe you can probably consider them non canon because they made them into series and stuff, which really didn't make sense but it is what it is here but again there are multiple examples within the anime on why the dragon ball z movies are just simply not canon well for starters you have kale who was literally a the first reference to broly before broly even came into um the dragon ball super series which is again a direct sequel to dragon ball z and again wouldn't goku and vegeta have made a reference to Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan. Now, I'm sure TFS will if they ever get to Dragon Ball Super, but again, <laughs> point still remains, right? Let's also go over the sheer fact that Vegeta had to learn the fusion dance. Again. Oh, wait, not again, because um, the Janamba movie never never really happened now, did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The Janamba movie, or Fusion Reborn, right? Um, Never happened. Was never canon to begin with hmm sounds very interesting though right but let's move on to the other one the video games now i'm not sure why this is a thing here nowadays i've seen a lot of people and a lot of youtubers with big accounts actually do this and um yeah i'm not i'm not sure why they constantly do is they try to prove that the games or the um sequel or at least the uh extended series and or game series and stuff like dragon ball super superheroes is somehow canon to the main line of dragon ball when again goku has never mentioned of meeting our time patroller and actually helping him defeat demigro he doesn't even mention xeno goku in the manga well the canon manga i should say and again, we also know that we've been around since what? Um, Battle of Gods? Yeah, wouldn't have Goku have remembered us by now from San to Boo Saga? Like, like, wouldn't he have remembered us by now? Because again, um, Goku's got a good memory. Despite the fact that he's an idiot, Goku has a very good memory. And again, this is a non-canon material. I, I mean... Unless, again, you're scaling a composite Dragon Ball, which, again, doesn't coincide with the canon cosmology of Dragon Ball, because, again, it's not really connected unless you're using a composite Goku, 
Or again, if you're using the whole Xeno scaling as well, yeah, um, Goku would have definitely remembered. And also, during the Moro arc, he wouldn't have a problem defeating someone like Moro, who is never, never going to be in the same leagues as characters like Demigra, Mira, even Toa, all right? Even the Supreme Kai of Time. Who, who who gets fodderized by a, l a large majority of even the weaker characters, and she would still fodderize someone like Moro, all right? But I'm not gonna continue this. I'm not. I'm gonna just show you the reasons why this is a big issue here. Because again, being an outer Russell character does not mean you have everything, all right? There are limitations here. But here's the thing. I'm going to kind of help, and again, I'm quoting this, by the way, help the Dragon Ball community get their out of Verso Goku. And again, it's very simple here. Now, nothing important here points to this out in his video and the video I'm putting up right here. So please go down to his channel. If you guys mess with me, y'all should mess with him and give him some love here and listen to that video carefully. So the argument is that Infinite Zamasu was becoming law and order. These are some of the biggest fundamentals in any cosmology of creation, some of the higher cosmologies as well. So becoming the literal embodiment or the literal concepts, major concepts of law and order, Zamasu would be outer versal. All right. Now, again, just hear me out. If you guys want another example of this, I want y'all to think of Regenesis Shockwave as kind of like a infinite Zamasu. Now, you might say legendary. How does that work here? Now, Regenesis Shockwave was going to destroy the concepts of change, past, present, and future. Pretty much everything that would have to do with, you know, his entire cosmology, literally, literally destroying every single thing, every single fundamental of his cosmology whether it was his brand cosmology or the entire omniverse we don't know but again it was a very these are very major concepts all right things that the entire verse needs <laughs> so Merzimasu would scale to that jiren who is confirmed to basically have been stronger than anyone they've ever fought and again this was after the goku black and zamasu arc and Ultra Instinct Goku would upscale the full power of Jiren, putting Goku at, again, a outerversal level. And again, remember, I'm using canon Dragon Ball Goku. So with all that being said here, how does Goku actually stack up to a character with simple outerversal, I guess you could say, feats, right? And let's use SCP-682 as a full-blown and blatant example so um what do i have for scp 682 well his hacks is he has um antimatter manipulation molecular manipulation cloning disease manipulation he can also well adapt to anything that kills him and comes back but you know enough about the hacks and abilities but um where does he scale well, I think it's kind of simple because it's out of Versal. With the SCP verse, you know, with the whole tree of life containing infinite universes and those universes having infinite dimensions within them as well, each dimension having a cosmology or at least a brand cosmology that actually transcends space, time, and dimensionality as well. With, again, SCP also being able to fight other scps or at least scp 682 is able to fight other scps that are also able to manipulate narrative or plot points within their story with now get this with scp 682 actually being able to bypass and even destroy entire narratives all right to actually be able to harm these scps and can absorb them so you have an entity that is beyond the narratives of his entire verse. Now, what is the issue with this entire battle, right? Goku gets hack stumped every single time. You put him against someone like Thor, and again, you use the same scaling. 
he still gets hack stumped every single time. The reason why it's better to have Goku at such a, I guess you could say a lower level, is because it makes it fair. It makes it very simple and easier. And again, I understand why a lot of people don't want Goku at this level. They don't want him at this high complex multiversal level, which again is very simple here. You see, even with the hyperversal, hyperversal <laughs> level, he still needs a lot more. He needs more metas. He needs super gravity metas. He needs hyperspace metas. He needs better super dimensional and actual super dimensional metas. This would be the best ways for Goku to actually get there. Now, when he actually has someone that bends super gravity, then um, yeah, we can definitely give him the hyperversal level as super gravity is an 11 dimensional application or at least a level of end up in 11 dimensional meta now let's talk about this new meta apparently and this is the Aureli scaling now again i don't have a problem with Aureli at all i, I don't have a problem with her being out of Ursa. i mean most toon force characters actually are you see toon force is pretty much a gag ability that allows them to do whatever they want they can interact with plots they can interact with narratives and they can go to wherever they want they can even you know d just destroy the entire comic or or whatever their work is within but the problem with this is that goku does not scale to a railing at all here they might say, oh, well, but they fought each other in anime. Again, a Toon Force's entire thing is doing it because it's funny. And it's written to be that way. You might say, oh, well, so you mean to tell me a Rayleigh, you know, wrote the story to be funny? Yeah. Yeah, that's very possible. And here's the thing, right? A Rayleigh can interact with narratives. A Rayleigh can, you know, basically rewrite entire stories can even bring characters to life by simply drawing them on paper again she is a toon force character she is meant to be funny she does it because it's funny to her it's fun to her now fast forward to when goku and ozzy vegeta um fought Aureli, and again she was using her toon force abilities to Again, simply clown or clown around in them. Now, again, Goku finding Aureli does not mean he scales to her. And one of the biggest examples of this is God of Stories Loki. Loki is a narrative manipulator. He's able to manipulate the plot, able to manipulate the story here. However, the Beyonder, a being that can flex off Celestials, tear apart the pages of his own retcon and literally bring himself back to the same levels that he was in the classic days, is confirmed to be weaker than God of Stories Loki. This is because, again, he controls his story. He controls his narrative. And there's nothing stopping the Beyonder from fighting against God of Story Loki except the sheer fact that he's under his control. Yeah, sure, he tore about his own retcon and stuff, but again, he is bounded by God of Stories Loki's control here. Now let's go right back to Aureli. Goku is under her control, under her narrative here. And there have been plenty of examples of characters of in a lower tier fighting against outerversal characters. You have the Thing and you have the Hulk. You have Wolverine and you have Thor. You see, the problem here is that Goku does not have any of the things that Aureli has, like being able to cross through time under her own speed, which again is an outerversal feat, because why can't Goku just go back in time and change things from happening, right? Well, um, yeah, this is because he's limited to what he can do, and Ki is limited to what it can do in Dragon Ball as well, right? Yeah, so, um, yeah, this whole outerversal Goku argument is honestly, I, I, I don't want to say it's dumb. I really don't. But again, you have your Gokus. You Dragon Ball fans have your Gokus to argue. Why do y'all keep using the canon version of Goku? You guys have them. You guys have Capsule Corp's Goku. 
You guys have Xeno Goku. They're right there for y'all to use. Use those versions of Goku. It doesn't matter if they're not canon or not. These are still versions, alternate versions of Goku you can use. The same way these Superman stands use Cosmic Armor Superman or these Thor stands use Rune King Thor, you have your Xeno and Capsule Corp Goku who each have their outer versal levels. That's going to be all today, you guys. You comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share with your friends. I know a lot of Dragon Ball stands are going to come at me in the comment section, but again, I've already said what I've said.